Okay, so you've seen what the tool can do. Real quick demonstration of real, just very quickly sharpening it. Not spending a lot of time, not, didn't even spend a lot of time refining this edge. Could you do more? Probably. Take a Arkansas stone and refine this and improve this edge and probably get the quality of this close to these maybe equal I, I don't know if the steel is ever going to be good enough in this as it is in this to do what we want to do um, but here's here's the rant part you know if you're done watching and, and you've got what you want and you say I don't want to hear any rants well then turn me off right now because uh, I'm going to give you two rants maybe three but definitely Here's the first one. I'll reiterate that the sellers of tools, like our big favorite blue store and orange store, they don't care what you need. They care what sells, and even more importantly, they care what makes profit in the store. But the buyers in those stores, they don't care that that somebody needs this tool and really the manufacturers may or may not care and they're going to look and say at some point they're going to say well they don't need that what do they use? who scrapes paint who's going to scrape wood with that tool who's going to do something like that they don't need that and it'll quit selling you won't be able to get them anymore and I say that not just as a rant I say that out of no, full knowledge that if you go back 50 to 75 years in the history of tool making with good old companies like Stanley and Miller Spalls, they made these tools even better than these tools, wider and more specific to what I'm talking about with working with wood. And they had a specific niche in the marketplace and in the world of the trades. And those tools have gone by the wayside. And this is the last thing remotely like those left. And at some point this will be gone. And what they'll sell you, they already sell this, they'll, what they'll sell you is this ridiculous tool with tungsten carbide that you can't sharpen and you can't put a burr on and cost more. And they're going to say, Give them, give them one and tell them to throw away the blades and get, buy a new one, buy a new blade. But, but the problem is the blade won't do anything. It's tungsten and carbide. You can't sharpen it. You cannot put a burr on it. And trust me, it's useless for woodworking. I don't even know what this would, would work for anything. Maybe scraping glue off a floor before laying another floor. I don't know what you'd use this for because it's only mildly sharp. Um, and, and that's what they'll sell us. They'll give us this tool. It looks good and everything, but it, it's like I always talk about. It's a big, beautiful apple tree with no apples on it, is what this is. And that's the way they do us today. They take the thing we need and quit selling that or quit making it. And they give us something that's uh, an apple tree with no apples. So that's rant number one. Rant number two is there's woodworkers, power tool woodworkers. They're going to tune me in for seconds and then boom, they're gone to another place. Because they instantly in their mind say, well, I don't work that way. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't care less about how to do something by hand. And they're going to go over to the other channels that they subscribe to that are decidedly power tool woodworking channels. And what's so sad about that is they have automatically assumed somewhere in their makeup, in their development as a craftsman, if they are one, they have somewhere in that process, they have hardened off into the idea that they automatically assume that you do things with power tools. The old way was to do something by hand, but that's stupid and ineffective. And you got—if you want to do woodworking, you got to have power tools. 
You gotta, you gotta do it with the power method. And so they automatically assume, on that stool, they would have automatically assumed, well, I've gotta cut and chop, chop and slash and grind into this thing, and then I'm gonna get down to a point where I'm gonna belt sand the shit out of it, and, and I'm gonna have that thing shaked up real quick and, and dirty and fast, and, and it'll be fine, and that's the way you do it today. And it's so sad that they, they just automatically assume well, you got to have the power tool. And I blame, I blame our old friend from the old house show who got into the woodworking and did the woodworking show. I blame our old friend for getting America and dragging us down that path. Because it seems to be sort of the origin point for this mentality that, well, this is what word work, you want to do woodworking? This is what it is. You've got to have this thing and this belt sander and this belt, uh, biscuit joiner and on and on and on. You know? And, and really, it's a joke to go back and look at his really old, early shows, his earliest ones from like 89, you know, 27 years old. He looks like he was struggling along in a shoestring compared to these guys today with all their festool and this, that, and the other. Uh, that guy would have wet his pants to have a festool domino thingy tool that, you know, they have today. And I guarantee you he would have had one. And, for the show at least, he probably does have one at his shop now. And, you know, it wasn't enough that then he had a, a, a five or six hundred dollar Lamello biscuit joiner. And people are like, what? Where, where do you buy the dowels for that? It's like, no, it's not dowels, they're biscuits. Well, where do you get those? I'm, I'm getting hungry just talking about it. And, you know, and he started us down that path. Well, this is what woodworking is. You want to do this, you got to have these tools. This, you you got to have this stuff. And, and I, me and a million other guys went down that path. Wrongly so. And I regret it so bad because if I had been acquiring the skills I should have been acquiring for the first few years, because I had hand tools, and I was headed down that road, and then this, this path in America with the power tools pulled me the other way, and I started coveting those tools and going that way, and it pulled me away from a good steady progress in the skills that I was acquiring. And if I'd have stayed in that path and acquired those skills, I would be light years ahead today of where I am. And my pieces would be more valuable, and I'd be more successful. But no, I had to go down that road because that's what they, this hair's woodworking, you want to do it, you got to have this. And it's so ridiculous and insane because that, that kind of woodworking is only about 40 or 50 years old in this country and in the world. We had machines in the industrial age, but that was in factories and mass production and all that. But in, in the home wood shop or the small workshop, the small shop, small commercial shop, that kind of power tool, that, that's only about 40, 50 years old, honestly. And I'd rather get in touch with thousands of years of humanity and the way people work and did the things we can't duplicate today. We think we can, we think we're so smart, and we cannot match the work in the cathedrals, in, in the, you know, the Roman times, and in, in the Renaissance times. And with simple hand tools. You know, hand tools would be, I, I, I hope to win a few people to hand tools because hand tools, not only are they safer and healthier and produce as good or better results, they'd be worth it just for that. But it's more enjoyable. And I know that's an, a, an aggressive statement, that's an opinionated statement uh, to say, but I'm entitled to my opinion, and I'm telling you it's more enjoyable. But they'd be worth it on the first three items alone. Safety, health, better for your health, better f because you exercise. Safer and produce fantastic results. Perhaps unequaled results in many, in many cases. But more enjoyable. You know, I... I I don't care really about somebody. I'm a hybrid shop. I use a table saw and I use a circular saw and, and some other, a couple other things. I have a battery drill. And I don't care about somebody having power tools. Uh, people say, oh, you're so harsh against power tools. No, I'm harsh against the attitude that that's what you have to have to do this work. 
I'm harsh against the attitude, the pressure, that that's what you should have. This is how you should do it. Which is a damn lie. I saw a YouTube uh, yesterday, and the title was something like, uh, here's the tools you need to get started in woodworking. The first thing he says on a thing is a Fest tool router. And I think that model that he said, I, that's a $900 item. And then he went on to show, well, you've got to have the Fest tool jigsaw and the Fest tool sander. He didn't say nothing about dust collection, and, and that's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. But he sets that one router down to say nothing about bits, and, and, and I'd be shocked if he didn't have $200 in bits right away to do anything. You're, you're going to have that kind of bits. And so the router and the bits, if I'm right, you know, the cheapest one Festool makes is $440. But if I'm right, and that was the $900 model, he sets that down, and then if he had mentioned the bits, which he didn't, it's $200. There's $1,100 in one item. And he's saying, here's what you need to get started with. Then say nothing about the dust collection, which you'd have to have with Festool, and that's hundreds of dollars for the sander and all this, that, and the other. And, and who's going to have that and not have the space to house it all, and on and on and on. And I'm thinking, gee, there's probably some guy out there that has as much passion for woodworking as I do, and he's thinking, well, I'll never do it then. Uh, I'll never do it if that's what i got to have. And I, I marvel at the insanity of that. The, the, the ignorance of that. That that's what you would tell people. Well, to get started, you're, you're going to need this, and you're going to need this, and you're going to need this. You know, you need a table saw that can't cut a hot dog, and, and on and on and on with this stuff. And uh, it, it really gets under my skin, to be honest with you, because I missed out. By switching paths and going to the power tool wood route in my career, both business-wise and personally, by veering into that direction, I cheated myself out of so much both professionally and personally. If I had just gone on and acquired the skills that I should have acquired. And that's a rant. And I know that's a rant. Um, I'll tell you one other thing. Probably not a rant. More of an observation. And that is, you go back to the guy that tunes me in for two seconds and tunes me out. Okay? There's something going on because he's probably going to then take his eyes to the channels that he subscribes to, these, these power tool sites, and he's going to switch over there and watch what he typically watches. And, you know, these guys that have, you know, 200, 600,000 subscribers, and they're decidedly power tool woodworkers, okay? They don't do anything with a hand tool. They might, uh, uh, the, way, the way we see uh, Norm used to do, we're going to pound and chop and grind this thing, and then we'll clean it up with a chisel. You know, that's, that's kind of what some of these guys do. You see it on the TV shows. That's the only thing they ever use hand tools for. We'll, we'll clean this up with a chisel. They don't actually make anything with the chisel, or actually cut a mortise, or shape anything, or, 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 or do anything like you know, with the chisel. But anyway, the, the, this woodworker, he's going to tune me out in two seconds. Go to, go to the sites he usually goes to. Watch those channels. They have two, three, five, six hundred thousand 600,000 subscribers. They're decidedly power tool woodworkers, which is fine and all that. But here, there's something going on, though. And here's my observation. Those channels, we're starting to see them build benches, Traditional benches. Not, I'm not talking about an MDF bench with full of holes for the Festool, uh, you know, cutting table thing or whatever. I'm talking about real benches. You know, Rubeau benches, Nicholson benches, English benches, real woodworking benches, viceless benches. We're seeing those guys, some of them, start to build this traditional bench. And I'm I'm thinking, okay, there's something going on here. Why, why, why are they doing that? And, and you'll even see some of them build the vise. Or, or make a moxen vise. How to make your own moxen vise. 
You know, this, this four, uh, 500 year old vice, 600 year old vice. And they're making one, lo and behold. And I'm thinking, I'm chuckling to myself, and I'm thinking, what are you going to do with that? You don't need that. You don't, you don't work that way. What would you want that for? Are you doing it because you know there's interest in a video like that? That there's something going on at the grassroots level that people are interested in that? And you've got to tap into that by making a video about it? You know, you're shrewdly observing that there's something going on here and I better make a video because it's, the people care about this. Or are you going to use it? Would be my question to them. What, what are you making this for? Because you're not going to use it because you don't work that way. And the moment you try to work that way, you're going to discover, I don't have those skills. And then you've got to go back to the back of the line and start over. Just like some of us did after watching, and I'll go ahead and say his name, after watching Norm Abram and, and going down that path of the freaking power tools and then cheating ourselves out of the skills we should have been acquiring. And then when I came to my senses, I had to go back and acquire and backtrack, and it costed me years, both business and personal, professionally and personal. It costed me years. I'd be light years ahead of where I am today. And I'm seeing something going on with some of these sites, that, that, they're, that they have the audacity to make a hand bench with vices, or a moxin vice. Or you're starting to see some of them hand-cut dovetails. And I'm laughing, I'm thinking, why are you doing that? That's, that's not who you are. And I, I don't want to sound overly judgmental. This is just an observation. It's really not a rant. I, I'm happy for them. I'm, ha I'm happy for their success. I'm happy for their passion to make things. I'm happy for their generosity to teach, try to teach others how to do it. Albeit, they're showing them, yeah, you can do this. If you have all this stuff that I have, if you have all this shit, you can do what I can do. And here's how to do it. That's not really showing people how to do with less. That's not really giving them skill, so to speak. It's that other layer of skill. There's skill with power tools, but it's not the, the underlying skill that the power tools replace. But I, I do admire all that. And... And I don't want to sound overly judgmental because, you know, the last time I checked, we're still somewhat of a free country, and you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to cut with a handsaw one day, and the next day, if you say, well, I'm a hand tool woodworker today, and then tomorrow, I'm a power tool woodworker, that's fine. Do that. I'm just trying to share my heart with you about, this is where I've been, this is where I am at now, this is how I cheated myself before. And this is how I'm happy. And here's how you can be happy doing this. And I'm also appealing to the guy who says, I'm never going to have all that other stuff. Show me how to do, I want to do this, and there's got to be a way. Show me how to do it that way. And, and, and I don't want to show him power tools. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to show him power tools. I want to show him hand tools. You know, I might show him a power tool now and then because. You know, there's a lot of people that can somehow finally muster up enough money to get a circular saw or jigsaw. So I may, I may show some of that stuff. But there's no loss of information with that. There's a loss of information with hand tools. You know, that's what, that's what we have. There's not a loss of information with power tools. And I, I want to continue. You know, every day I learn something about hand tools. Every day. You know, I... I know that I don't know something, but I don't know what I don't know, and so I'm looking, looking, looking. And I learn stuff about these tools every day. And we have to get back into that mode where we're discovery, and we're learning in the research, in the history, what hasn't died yet, and, and, and rebuild this knowledge base with these tools. Because I'm telling you, four-fifths of the world, they're never going to have fest tools. They may not even have the electricity to run festival. And I don't know about you, but I care about that other four-fifths of the world that I'm not part of. You know, four-fifths of the world don't have a gla clean glass of water to drink today. They don't have a, a, an outhouse to poop in hardly. And they're not going to have festival. And they're not going to have 
a $900 router, and they may not have electricity. They might have a cell phone, and they can listen to this video somehow, but they don't have electricity. And, you know, I care about that part of the world. But I also care about the guy who says, well, I can afford anything I want to buy. Quit picking on me if I want to buy. Yeah, go buy it if you want to go buy it. I'm saying you don't need that. And don't feel pressured to do that. And don't pressure others to do that. And don't make it an ego trip that you can do that. Because you don't need that. And I'll show you the guy that when you build something with $20,000 in tools, I'll show you the guy that did it with $250 in tools and did it better than you. So if you're going to be that guy that's, you know, wealthy and buy anything you want and do it any way you want to do it, that's fine. I would suggest you be quiet about it. And don't flaunt that in front of other people because that, that doesn't help the situation. That doesn't help the world at large. And, and that's what I see in the freaking TV shows. And in some of, some, not all, some of the YouTube channel. They're saying, well, here's how you do this and, and you got to have all this shit. And, 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 and it's a joke if they say, well, let me show you how to get started in woodworking. To even do that, they need to get on foot with a camera and go around the shop. Well, you need this thing, and here's the saw. It won't cut a hot dog, and you gotta have that, and you gotta have dust collection, or you'll die. And you gotta have this, and you gotta have this, and you gotta have. It. And pretty soon, you add all that shit up, and you have the space to put it in with a shop, with air filtration, and, and parking, and forklifts, and, and all this stuff. Pretty soon, you got a hundred thousand dollars. And it's not even a guy, an everyday working shop that's selling the pieces. It's not really not making a dime from it. He might say, well, I make my living from this. Well, how, how do you make your living? Are you, are you a working shop that you sell those pieces like I do? Or are you making a living because you're talking about it on YouTube with 500,000 subscribers? Or 200,000 subscribers? You know? And, and I don't have anybody specifically in mind necessarily with this. I, I might, but I might not. I'm just saying, I know a lot of YouTubers, they don't have that. You know, they work in pretty modest... Uh, environment and and uh, you know I don't want to cast everybody into this mold that I'm putting out there but there definitely is out there and I despise it and, and I ran about it and I preach against it because uh, I just think it doesn't it, it doesn't help humanity it, it's harmful and so uh, you know these are observations rants if you will and I thank you for watching. Uh, you didn't have to hear this part. I, I, I want to give you good instruction and share my heart with you. And I appreciate your your interest in the craft. And.